the order tonight from four state governors as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to take a heavy toll on families, communities, and nations the world over. Today, more than 24,000 now nationwide. New Jersey today becoming the sixth state to close all non-essential businesses, joining California, New York, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. Les Jones, I'm the uh, director of the Office of Health Services. I'm Mary Beth Caruso, director of nursing for the Office of Health Services. I first remember hearing it on the news, and it's when the virus was being identified in China um, and overseas from us. And you know, you heard it. You know, it's like, wow, this is going on. You know. And you started to think about what's the impact going to be of travel, especially of travel. And as time went on, you know, that was kind of like, I think, the end of December of 2019. Um, in the beginning of 2020, in January, I know we as a team started to sit down and, hey, what if this starts coming to the United States? We not need to start looking at some of our plans and, and whatnot and see, you know, what we need to be prepared for. And I can actually remember having some conversations at the administration level is, you know, we need to start thinking about this and how we might respond to this. And, uh, you know, as time went on, at the end, of, I know in February, at the end of February, I happened to actually be in the hospital. I was in Robert Wood for a few days. And all you heard was about COVID. And all you heard on all the TVs was COVID. You heard the nurses talking about COVID. You know, when's it going to get here? What are we going to do? So you could see the progression over those few months of how there's a little bit of panic started to set in, you know, to the public. So I think that's my beginning. Of, yeah, know. for me, it was around the same time. Um, we had to, uh, st as a nursing division, we had to track and monitor the travelers into the U.S. So when someone from uh, China came in, especially from the Wuhan pro province, they would send us the information. We'd have to reach out, call them. They had to take daily temperatures. And then we had to call back in like seven days, 14 days, and follow these travelers. And then all of a sudden, it was like getting more and more and more. And then, like Les said, he was in the hospital. And I just never forget that day that you know we were checking. And it was like, wow, COVID's in the US. And what are we going to do? And then it was like right then, you know, you get your first case zero. And, and you know, we had um, it, it just, it was just, uh, we didn't really know what to do. But, um, you know, it started out like, oh, we'll just follow these travelers. And then no one really knew how it was, it was going to go. But, you know, you heard it on the news. We followed it. We, we met. We did some planning meetings. Um, very basic at that stage. Well, our first response was to bring our team together in health services. We have four divisions here in you know, nursing. We have our inspectors that are in the field, you know, and then we, we have our health education division and even our environmental division. We knew it was going to take all hundred and some odd employees that we have in the health department alone, but it takes more than that. You know, it's going to take, it, and it evolved through the two and a half years that we spent in the pandemic. But we, we knew we were going to be overwhelmed and we kind of had to plan how we were going to do things, how we were going to set up teams, who was going to be responsible for what. And then there's also working with, with administration on what were our needs going to be, you know, how are we going to communicate to the public, you know, how are we going to communicate to our elected officials because we saw panic starting to set in. Yeah, for me, it was, um, you know, getting that, that call center up and running. And we did use um, our Medical Reserve Corps helped us out in the beginning. Um, they volunteered for, you know, come in and answer some phone calls. And then it was, you know, several like late nights in our conference room planning, like, what are we going to do? Like nursing will take over the testing and, and the, the uh, vaccination and, you know, health ed will do the communications and the phones and environmental will do this, this and that. Um, so it was, 
literally I can remember just sitting in the conference room and using like stick figures of like, you know, how we're going to test all these residents. Because even in the beginning, there wasn't even a test for it. So we had to wait for like, you know, pre-authorization from the, the FDA on, on a test and how are we going to do this and is the test reliable? Um, you know, so it, that was kind of the first thing for us is what, what are we going to do as, as a county, you know, and how are we going to do it? And we could not do it alone. You know, we had to, we had to meet with, uh, you know, other departments, IT and uh, logistics and um, do we even have supplies for, for testing and everything? We were looking where are we going to make up test kits? It wasn't the test kits were going to be put together and given to us. We were actually reaching out to different vendors to where can we get swabs, where can we get alcohol wipes, where can we get the containers to put them in to go for testing. And, um, you know, so we spent a lot of time with different vendors and different laboratories because there were only so, so many laboratories that could do the tests. Um, the state health department in the very beginning their lab was doing it but obviously they were going to become extremely overwhelmed very quickly so how they expanded the laboratory network and we had to be in contact with them we had to get contracts done very quickly um, we were fortunate that you know at the state government level that they basically took all the uh, requirements off of us you know to be able to get contracts right away under an emergency um, you know, so these are these are all the things that we had to line up in order to even get to that that point of doing those first tests, and then it was where are we going to go? Where are we going to do these? You know, because one of the things that we learned over 20 years is nobody wants it in their backyard, so to speak. So nobody wants it in the schools. And at that time, we weren't talking shutdown like we did, but nobody wants it in a school. Nobody wants it where they're going to get exposed to it, even though we could be taking every precaution there was to prevent it from spreading. How do we do this? How do we protect our people? Okay, and we, you know, we had protective equipment, but then again, you had a global supply chain. So we're trying to find out where we can get more equipment. We were going to use a lot of equipment. There, there were still OSHA procedures we had to follow during this. They didn't reduce those any because we had to protect our people. We had to protect the public coming in. You know, so these were a lot of things that we were looking at. And then, you know, we, we were very fortunate that we actually thought of utilizing our inspection stations when they closed everything. When we shut down, here's a venue where you drive up, we do your test, and you drive away. You don't get out of your car. You know, so we're containing everything. You know, we had to take precautions because we were handling samples. And at that time, we were doing nasal swabs in the very beginning. So our first day, even though it was April Fool's Day, it was April 1st, and there was, there was nothing foolish about it, trust me. Yeah. But that was the day when we did our first test, and we were at the, uh, the uh, Edison Motor Vehicle Station over in Kilmer. Behind me, you can see the first testing site has opened, and there are residents from Middlesex County driving up here to what used to be a motor vehicle inspection site. This is the first rollout of all this today. And again, they'll see how it works, but they're hoping to really scale it up, make it available beyond Middlesex County in New Jersey, perhaps nationally. And again, it has a lot of promise because it's a simpler, less intrusive method of testing for the virus, whether the virus is there or not. It helps to protect the workers uh, that are helping with the test. It's said to be 100% accurate. Uh, there's uh, not as many false positives with this test as well. So, you know, this is, this is really a game changer. The scariest thing for me during the pandemic, I would have to say, was early on. We just didn't know what COVID was. And I can remember putting that um, Tyvek suit on, the N95 mask, and then at some point we were wearing respirators and having to stand on the line and swab people that were so sick. Um, you can see it and then being scared like just being scared like did I put my mask on correctly you know am I getting it and then you know then realizing you you know maybe you've been exposed to one of the nurses got it or something now I'm waiting for the test myself and then bringing it home to my family you know I had my kids were small and same thing like Les said I, you know I would get undressed in the garage but for me that was the scariest because we just didn't know but we had to do it and, you know, to be close to people and, and swabbing and just 
we're literally praying every day that this is going to get better and um and then to you know just the fear of bringing it home or having your family get sick or you because people were dying we didn't know we, there was no treatment early on and it was just supportive care and treating you know symptoms and for me that that was the scariest you know it was quite a production it took a lot of pieces to put that on it wasn't just the health department it was health department it was communications it was our sheriff's department it was local police department local fire department you know it was a big team effort just to do testing and the day it got here that line was there that line was was waiting and people were very anxious about getting tested and at that time you had to be symptomatic to get tested you know, you know, like now, going towards the end of the pandemic, you know, anybody could get tested. You can get a home test kit now. Okay, but back then, you had to be showing these symptoms, and we everybody had a check-off list. You had to check in, and, you know, if you met those criteria, you got through. We never turned anybody away, so we didn't know whether you were telling the truth or not, but we didn't turn anybody away. You got tested that day, and there were days, I think, we ran out of tests. Mm -hmm. And we did have to turn people away, but that, you know, that was because of our supply chain. That was because of lab capability, because we weren't the only county doing this. We weren't the only municipality doing this, you know. So there was a big strain on the system as a whole.